So hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. When I left y'all last, we were doing a complete rebuild of this uh, 1972 Plymouth Fury dashboard. And uh, unfortunately, I grabbed a can of uh, spray foam that didn't have a nozzle on it. So we had to make a trip back to the store. That's where the video ended. Uh, we're gonna pick up, we're just gonna pick up right where we left off. We're just gonna, man, I'm having problems with electricity, it's crazy. Uh, we're gonna just get in right where we left off apply that spray the spray foam and uh after that it's going to be like a ton of mud work and sanding so let's just get into it man give this stuff a little shake twist our cap on or nozzle rather and here we go so obviously we got to fill all this back in well i guess we start in the deepest area first that would make more sense right there we go just kind of fill this in uh the way i want to do this is Probably kind of build it up in layers, not do the whole thing all at once, you know what I mean? Um, basically, we'll come through with another pass, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll do this in multiple passes because it's been my experience with this stuff that if uh, build it up too, too thick at once, it won't dry all the way, like it'll stay kind of liquidy and soft in the middle, you know? So I don't know, we'll see how it works out. It acts like it's actually gonna fill everything in on the first pass, because this stuff swells up like three times its normal thickness, so this should all fill in. Uh, I got me this guy here. Maybe we should try this out. Let's come through here and just kinda, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll see how this works, kind of run through here and do this. I don't know if that's going to do us any good. That might be more harm than good. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if that's working out so good. Ah, oh well. We'll just keep doing it the way we're doing it. Kind of fill it in here. Come down to this area here. Same number. We just want to get covered. We could go back and trim this stuff off. You know, the, ex the, the excess of it is going to have a lot of it. We can go back. Trim all of that down after it's said and done. Now, three times its thickness, it's it's normal, you know, the way it comes out of the can. That's a lot. I feel like I'm getting clogged up here. So this this ought to do it, I would think. But we'll find out. It's acting like the tip's clogged up, really, to be honest. I'm not sure what that's about, because I'm still about a half a can, I think. That's what it feels like. So anyway, we'll get all this filled in, and then we'll come back and do the next step. Okay, what you see is what you get. <laughs> Man, that was a bad idea right there. Don't do that. So anyway, kind of an experimental deal. I've never done it this way, and I don't know, man. It may work, it may not. We'll just have to wait and see. So I've been letting it sit for about an hour. Uh, I'm gonna flip it over and take the tape off the bottom side now. See, at this point, we can come through and pull the tape off. Should be done with it. If it acts like it's trying to stick to the uh, foam, you might need to let it dry for a little bit longer. It seems to be coming off okay. I'm not tearing it or anything. So there you have it. Tape peeled off, turned out pretty nice. I think that'll work. Got a few spots here. You can see where that's actually still trying to uh, to expand now that the tape's off, kind of curing from the bottom side, I guess. Uh, the top side's great, but it uh, looks like we got a little spot there. It's probably right where it got really thick, you know? Yeah, right in this area here is really thick, so that's okay. Now that with the tape off, it could kind of finish expanding, kind of drying, I guess, from curing, I guess, from the bottom side out, uh, kind of like it did up here. You can see up here, it's really good. I mean, <laughs> we're good to go there. So I'll give it a little bit longer and we'll come back and I guess uh, the next step will be start shaping this. So I've been working this for a few minutes now. I found that this is the best thing, just a red Rolock disc. I mean, look at that. It's just aggressive enough that, uh, man, it buzzes that right off the top of there. And then I go back over with, with uh, my little palm sander here, my finish sander, nice and slow, just kind of work it down from there. This will get it close. 
and then kind of finish it up with this. That's got me to here. You can see, you know, it's a big difference from this, right? Uh, we're getting close. Now, in this area, this is the part where it kind of busted out on the bottom, you know, after we pulled the tape off. You see, you see all that coming out of there? Uh, that was where it was really thick. So, my biggest suggestion on this, in an area where it's really thick and you're having an issue with it curing from the, from the outside in, basically, uh, work this area extremely slow. And that way you can kind of keep an eye on it and just check on it. And if you find yourself like, oh man, this is like really soft right here, which is exactly what happened. You see there, that's the thickest part of this entire dash is right there. So all I got to do is just give that a few more minutes. Now that I've worked a, a layer off the top, right? Now all I got to do is just give it, I don't know, another 20, 30 minutes, come back and it'll be, it'll be fine. We can continue on after that. So basically all I'm saying is just slow down, man. Take it easy. Don't get, if I would have just been digging at it with this thing, it would have went right into that. We would have popped right through into that and it would have been, it would have been a mess. It would have been a lot, you know, a lot more work. So anyway. So yeah, this stuff is extremely messy. Uh, a fan would be nice. Keep the door open, blow the stuff away from you. Outdoors would probably be the best place to do this, to be honest. Uh, so anyway, like I said, we're only using this just to get it close. Once we get it close, we will switch off to this, and that's where we're at right now. Good news, the soft spot is just about there, so that's, that's working out just fine. The rest of it seems to be really good. Uh, we'll go through, and what I gotta do is come over here and just continue this the same shape right here we'll just continue it right on all the way through here get our angle you know everything right Probably have to do a test fit make sure it fits against the windshield the way it's supposed to and uh, then of course cut out the defroster vents and all of that so uh, I'm gonna continue to go on with this now and just kind of dial it in just a little bit better Now I know it looks bad. It looks like the surface of the moon with all the craters, but it's foam. I mean, what do you expect? So uh, we just needed something on there to put our, you know, our filler on top of, and that's what we're going to do next. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I've actually worked the uh, foam down just a little bit lower than the uh, the surrounding area. You might can see here where we're, we're up here, you know, and then we're just a little bit down. That's okay, we want that because we wanna allow for our layers that we're about to put on here. It's also worth mentioning that the areas where we're about to do our filler work, we did sand 
with uh, an 80 grit sandpaper. We worked the area around and we've cleaned it all off with acetone as well. Yeah, like all these areas around here where we, when we wipe our filler, we're gonna go over onto the top of the uh, dash pad itself and we, you'll want all that to be worked down with some 80 grit at least and a good proper cleaning. So it's time for the filler and uh, show you guys a little trick in case you guys don't know. I know most of you guys probably already know this, but this is like ketchup. When you first try to squirt it out, after it's been sitting for a little while, nothing but juice wants to come out. That's not good. You don't want that on your burger and you don't want it on your, uh, in there either. So you need to keep that liquidy stuff inside of here where it belongs. So nice little trick is just to kind of squeeze it until it starts to come out of the end there. Put the cap back on it. Take it and just roll it in your hands, just like this. Okay, flip it over this way, roll it this way. Just roll it around. Just like that, that ought to get it. You'd be good to go after that and then you could put it on your filler and not have to worry about all the juice coming out. The way I like to do my hardeners, I just put it off over to the side. I don't run it across the mud. It's not a big deal if you do run it across the mud, but you just better be willing to uh, mix it up quick. So here we go, we're just about ready. You notice I'm not really stirring the mud, I'm just mixing, kind of, you know, flattening it out, gathering it back up. I know y'all's probably seen me do this a million times, but this is how you do it. Uh, if you stir it, you're gonna get air in it and that causes pinholes, and in this situation, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but if you're doing regular body work, you don't want no pinholes, I'll tell you that much. So here we go, let's get a little mud on our spreader and let's start wiping this. It's worth mentioning that we did go the extra mile and blow this thing off with the air hose. You wanna get all that dust out of there. So we're just gonna get this on here so we can get on to the next step. We'll need to do this rather quickly. We can't let this harden up on us in the middle of this, that's for sure. So let's get this going. No more messing around. We're going to work this back and forth so it gets down into all those craters. Like that. And it's going to be a little bit messy. We'll try to be nice and neat with this as much as possible. But it will get a little messy. Nothing's going to be as bad as it was though when we were when we were doing that foam man that stuff was really messy that sanding process was a nightmare uh, i thought it was snowing out here and even with my mask on i felt like i was still breathing that crap in i didn't like it, it gave me a headache so keep that in mind when you're doing this man go outdoors if you can that's kind of what i wish i would have did it was a little too cold for that though so we had to do it in here today's going to be a little bit warmer That'll be nice. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this in half. In other words, we're gonna just do half now and then half with our next wipe because we're gonna run out of work time for too long. So once we get to this point, what I wanna do now is we are going to switch over to our tape. Check this out. So here we go, we've got our drywall tape. Let's get this stuck on here. We wanna do this while that mud is still wet. Yeah, we're just gonna run this stuff through here. It's okay if it overlaps. Not a problem at all. We'll just keep putting this on here. And again, I cannot stress this enough. You've gotta do this while the mud is still wet. Otherwise, this step will not do you any good. We need that to be embedded into that filler. It's very important. So let's get all of this. Oh, there we go. Let's get all of this on there. Let's take our spreader and let's push that right down in that filler and keep everything nice and straight. We don't want no wrinkles. But yeah, just get that right down in that filler. Just squish it down in there. This is going to give us so much strength, you guys. This right here is what is going to make us or break us. Just come through here. Be really careful. 
all right we want to squish that down into the mud but we don't want to wrinkle up our tape okay kind of important there so let's keep that going get that all squished see there got a little little rambunctious there started to started to roll up my tape we don't want that we don't want that at all so just be be careful with it that's all there we go just keep going back and forth don't get too carried away don't want to wrinkle that stuff up if you got any mud left which we got just a little bit here not much i'll have to mix up another batch you want to take it just run it right on top of there like so all right all right that's looking pretty good let's mix up another batch about to have my next batch ready we'll get that smeared right on top of the other one we're going to do this while the other batch is still firming up that way this one will stick to that one without us having to go back in and sand it so another reason why you want to kind of you want to work quick you got to get it moving so here we go let's smooth this out look at that that's looking nice already man i'm on it we even gonna to have to sand this when we're done <laughs> yeah definitely so yeah we'll just get us a nice little even coat on there man i love smearing this mud it's kind of therapeutic in a way i mean look at that that's nice I'll do this and hold the camera at the same time. This is way more challenging than you guys know. And these cameras, man, they make so much sound when you're bumping them around. It's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to do this and hold the camera and keep it from rubbing up against something and making a bunch of annoying sounds and all of that. So anyway, oh the struggles of a YouTuber. Listen to me. Here we go. So we're about to have that exactly the way we want. The better you spread it, the less sanding you'll have to do to make it look right. Uh, it's lumpy, so we got plenty of sanding to do already. So yeah, I'll keep going. We'll get the whole, this, all the rest of it all covered up, just like that there. All right, so I thought I'd show you guys, just for fun, in real time, exactly what each step takes. So let's go through this without cutting away see what this looks like it's gonna be boring <laughs> feel free to fast forward but for those of you that, that like to see exactly how all this goes without the cuts and all of that here we are man let's do it so we got our next batch mixed up let's get that hardener in there and again just spread it out on your board gather it all back up wipe it off your spreader okay Keep your spreader clean. Wipe it back out. When you wipe it back out like that, not only are you mixing it thoroughly, but you're working out the air bubbles. You don't want the air bubbles in there. It's just a good habit to have. We're not really worried about that, like I mentioned on this particular project, but it's just a, it's a good habit to have. Keep the air worked out of your mud. Don't, don't work it into your mud by stirring. So. There you go, man, we got that mixed up. Uh, it's a balancing act when it comes to the hardener. Some of you guys, how do you know how much hardener to put? It all depends on what the temperature and the humidity is outside. And the only way to really learn it is through trial and error. So here we go, let me turn you guys around just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Here we go, let's wipe on our next batch. And again, I'll probably do it about like I did the the uh, other part and we'll do this in thirds that's what it seems like we got going on here and then after that we'll put our tape on here in just a second remember go back and forth if you'll notice the craters don't actually go shut until you do the back and forth method if you just wipe it one way 
you'll end up with nothing but craters and then when you turn back and wipe it the second you know the opposite way the craters go away so you want to always make sure i'm gonna go ahead and I, I noticed i missed a spot over here hang on i'll be back hang on missed a spot over here let's get some of that on there there we go perfect okay so got all the mud off next step is our tape let's go ahead and get this on here like i said man it's fine if you uh overlap not even a problem i probably should have cut that before i put it on there but whatever there we go i think i'll do that on the next one cut it before there we go okay we'll get that there we go let's cut our next piece before we put it on there and you'll want you'll want to cut this stuff because if you try to tear it all you end up with is a bunch of little little strings like this all over the place so you don't want to you don't want to do that you want to definitely cut the pieces i'm using my razor blades that a subscriber was nice enough to send to me really cool man these things have been very useful on these projects we could probably get away with not putting one out here on the end but i'm gonna do it anyway it won't matter we can trim it off later there we go like i said i think i've said it a hundred times already it don't matter if you overlap this stuff it will be fine in fact it just make it a little bit stronger i think some of y'all are probably like why didn't you just do one continuous piece all the way across and the only reason why is because i want to work this in smaller sections because i don't want to take a chance on losing my filler in other words if the filler blows up on you before you have time to wipe it all on that's it man you just wasted that filler i don't like that man because even this cheap stuff's getting expensive man this walmart you know uh bondo brand filler which is about the cheapest stuff you can get is actually becoming pricey just like everything else who would have thought right so anyway again when you're doing this you want to squish that that tape down into that filler man this is where all of our strengths coming from this dashboard is going to be strong y'all it's going to be really strong so now that we've got that let's mix up our next batch and uh, this will be enough to to cover our next third and put another coat over there on the part that we just did so let's mix this up a nice healthy little batch here you guys see here where where this is a little bit higher than this surface we kind of got a little bit of a drop off there that's that's fine that's what i want because we ain't done yet we ain't done yet we're building up layers here right so there you go that's going to take care of that little section just right cool beans i like that well look here being stupid over here rolling up my edge don't do that okay so now like i said we, we should have enough to come through here and at least start our second layer i was hoping to have enough to to put on here and uh go ahead and run our mesh but i don't know it doesn't look like it looks like i might have to mix up a little more not a problem not a problem let's get moving can't waste no time turn you guys around this way uh hang on i'm gonna steal a paper towel there you go yeah i got you guys on the paper towel roll there working out just right here we go let's clean our spreader again you guys have been sending me stacks of these spreaders. I could easily toss this to the side and go grab another one. I got like a stack of spreaders that high thanks to y'all. But you know what? We ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. Nope. We will clean our spreaders off. We will clean our mud board off. Something else coincidentally was sent to us by a subscriber. And we're going to make it last. I, you know the last mud board I had? This disposable mud board, in case you guys didn't know. You can peel the sheet off. It's got a whole whole bunch of them there. Uh, <laughs> the last mud board I had lasted literally for like a whole year. So, And it's because of this little move right here. I like to be frugal 
<laughs> you know, I like to go sparingly on things. I don't like to waste, even if I am in a position to do so, which you guys have kind of put me in that position. I could splurge on this stuff if I wanted to, but I ain't going to. We ain't doing it, man. It's not who I am. So here we go. Mix in our mud again. I'm probably boring you guys to death at this point. Feel free to fast forward. I don't blame you. You know, I don't even watch my own videos. <laughs> they annoy me to death, y'all. I can't stand the sound of my own voice. I hate it. I hate it. So I can barely, and by the time I've edited it, I've probably done watched it four or five times through the editing process. So to go back and watch it after it's done, is like, ugh, can somebody mute this thing already? <laughs> so anyway, here we go, man. Got our next one ready. We'll wipe that on there. The, the coat we just put on there is still good, so don't worry about that. This will all stick together and it will get along just fine. Promise you that. Remember back and forth, we want all them craters to go shut. Kind of a big deal there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that little number there. Okay, now, uh, here we go. Let's get our tape ready. And I done learned my lesson on that last piece. We are going to cut it ahead of time. So here we go. Let's get this guy in there. Okay, next. Let's get this one in here. Again, no problem overlapping. In fact, I would actually recommend overlapping, to be honest. Overlap it a little bit, make it even stronger, why not? So yeah, just get that down in there. There we go, now we can come through, start squishing it down in there. And all you're doing is just making that mud come up through that mesh, you know? You see, you see that's a mesh. Well, you want that filler to come up through that mesh, obviously, so. That's what we're doing here. Some of you guys are calling me the Bob Ross of car repair, and I do appreciate that. I take that as a huge compliment. Uh, Bob Ross, man. I grew up watching Bob Ross. I will still watch Bob Ross videos to this day for sure. That guy's awesome. And uh, <laughs> like I said, a big, big part of my childhood. So to hear you guys say that I have that demeanor is uh, uh it's a compliment in my book so anyway let's uh here we go now we can put our top layer on now that we got all that squished yeah i like that man digging it this is nice this is pretty nice man are we even gonna have to sand this when we're done i don't i don't know man it's kind of liking how uh, all of this is laying down. It wouldn't surprise me if we go back to that first section we put on this guy here. What are you doing? Get out of here. Wouldn't be surprised if we couldn't go back to that first section. It'd probably be about hardened up. Unfortunately, we will not be able to sand this until it completely hardens because it's Bondo. Bondo brand Bondo. My experience does not sand quite as good as some of the more expensive brands like the 3Ms and stuff. They got polyester in them. And I don't know, man. It just seems like it makes it so much easier to sand because what happens is it doesn't tear, you know? And uh, that's a big deal. When you want to come in here and work this down with some really gritty 36 grit, which I love. That's what I like to get my shape dialed in with. Some really gritty stuff. And uh, you, can't, you can't really do that with this until it's completely dry. So whatever. What I'll probably do is uh, work it with a an electric sander. Not an electric sander, but an, an orbital sander. My finish sander is what I'll do. You know, you could take a DA or something like that to it. Buzz it all down, get it close, and then we'll start switching over to uh, our glaze and things like that. And we could kind of dial it in, get it nice and smooth with a block, 
make it look a little better. It's a dashboard. It's not a quarter panel. It does not have to be perfect, you know what I mean? So we don't have to get super carried away with it. Okay, how many of y'all are still with me and didn't fast forward it? Don't lie. <laughs> it's fine. I don't care. Whatever. Uh, yeah, like I said, man, this area here where we first started is already dry. And I would imagine this one is following suit. Yeah, it's getting it's getting tacky. It's still wet. And, of course, that spot's still going to be really wet. So, anyway, we'll give it a little more time. Uh, I'm tempted to set it outside in the sun to kind of speed this up a little bit. It would be It's fine. It won't hurt anything. Yeah, something like that. We'll leave that out here. I guarantee you about 15 minutes, we'll be good to go. get my mask off. All right, we're doing a little sanding now. Uh, I've got me some 60 grit sandpaper on here. You can use 40. Hell, you might could even get away with 80, depending on how much sanding you got going on. But we'll start here with our 60 grit. See, kind of wavy. We'll get it all smoothed up best we can. Uh, we got another layer going on, so we don't have to get too carried away, but we do want to rough this up now that it's hardened up. You'll want to rough it up before we put our next layer on. That's all I'm doing right now. So I've been sanding on it for a few minutes now and I just wanted to show you guys uh, out here on this end. Look, it's actually starting to take its shape. You see here, uh, we're getting it nice and flat. Remember this, look at this, just in case you forgot, that was all dug out there. We're filled in. We got a couple little low spots, nothing major. Another little skim coat will take care of that. But I just wanted to show you our body line is starting to form now. Uh, hopefully you can see this on camera. but. Um, this shape here needs to be kind of at an angle where it meets up to the windshield and we need to carry that all the way along. We'll have what we'll end up with is a little style line through here, you know, a little angle where it's flat and then kind of goes off to an angle where it meets the windshield. We need to carry that all the way across here on the entire thing. Uh, so obviously we're still low. We'll need to build this area up a little bit higher because I've already sanded back down to this style line over here. Remember, this is how tall uh, the, the dash will be when it's done, is right here. We don't want to go up any higher than that. And uh, we've got a little low spot here, and we'll need to carry this angle all the way across here. So what I'll do is I'll continue to sand, and we'll rough this up since it's dry. You won't want to add any more body filler to this without sanding it first. So I will then, I'll, I'll just continue right along, just like we're doing here. This is turning out great. This is still low. We'll sand this, apply more filler, and then I'll check in with you guys after that. Well, okay, so we did uh, end up adding another layer. Check it out. After roughing up the previous layer with some 80 grit, I added another layer. We did the mesh. We, did, we repeated the entire process all over again. I think by the time I buzz this layer down, uh, we'll be pretty much there. Uh, you see our body line starting to form, our style line. Remember, we want this to be an angle to match up to the windshield. It's starting to form. So I'm going to keep on sanding, and then uh, we'll, we'll come back and see where we're at after that.
So I skipped ahead a little bit, just kind of spared you guys some of the sanding, but not to worry, there's plenty more. We are not done yet. What I'm doing now is just kind of recreating this body line or style line actually that runs across the entire length of this dash. I mean, this is a long line here that we got to recreate. And as you can see, I just ran me a piece of tape. And now I'm just running my sandpaper with my block along the, the length of this tape, just using that tape as a guide. And if you're careful enough, you can actually kind of just put your uh, block just right against that, just right against it. Don't get crazy with it or you'll just sand right over the top of it. But after a while, you get you a line going. I, mean, I don't know if you can see, but we've already got our line up top because this is already all nice and smooth. Now we just got to work this one back to it a little bit and we'll recreate this line kind of like this one here, just to kind of a little divot here. And I'll run across the course, you know, the whole length of the dash here. And what I'll do is, is I'll put another piece of tape right alongside of this one. And then we'll peel this piece of tape off. And then we'll do the same exact thing on the opposite side. And eventually we'll have ourselves, we'll have ourselves a nice little body line running through here. But yeah, I did kind of skip ahead a little bit. And uh, you can see where this is all starting to come together now. Look at that, boy, that's looking good, nice and smooth. This is all filled in now, nice and smooth. We're still working this one here. And then of course up here as well, we'll get that all nice and sanded. Look where the, the vent plate goes. Look at that, we, we're recreating that entire area. Remember how bad that was. And uh, I saved this area here. I figured, you know, uh, this is more of the same of what was going on over there. So I saved this one for you guys. And uh, we're, we're doing it, we're filling it up in layers. And uh, we're recreating body lines. We're just having all kinds of fun. Yeah, I think we're starting to get a nice little line built up there. So like I said, we will run right through here on the opposite side with our masking tape. I suggest using a quality tape when you're doing this. That old cheap Walmart stuff probably won't stick to this filler. I don't know. You can try it if you want to, but here we go. Now we're totally opposite what we had just a second ago. Now we can come through here. We'll peel up this layer, right? And now we'll start sanding on this side of the tape. When we're done, by the time we pull this piece, we ought to have a pretty decent little body line going. We're kind of running along the length of the tape here. You have to be careful. If you just run over the tape, you'll tear it. You can see, you know, you'll get a little bit of that, but the idea is to try to maintain the shape of the tape, you know, so you get that nice crisp line that we're done. And I think we are just about to get it. I'm gonna peel this tape off, see what we got here. Let's see. All right, all right, we are starting to see. See, we're getting our line there. Can y'all see that? See, our line is forming, so that's what we're wanting. It's looking pretty decent, so what we'll do is is once the line is formed, we'll have to go back and kind of, cause it's not a sharp line from the factory. It's more of a kind of a softer edge. If you look right here where the old one is, it's kind of a soft, just rolls into it, right? And over here, we got the angle. You know, we made that with our tape. Nice and straight, looking good. But we're gonna wanna kind of blur that out a little bit. We don't want it to be so sharp. So what we could do is very easily just kind of run right over it. I know, it's a shame, man. Nice crisp body line. We're just going to go through here and just kind of dull it out. But that's what it's supposed to be. We're trying to mimic, you know, the rest of the dash of what it's supposed to look like. So we will go ahead and just kind of roll the, take the crisp, take the crispiness out of it, right? Just kind of soften up the edge just a little bit. And of course, we can switch grits to a little bit finer grit and smooth it up a little bit more. And we're not done yet anyway. I mean, this whole thing, when I'm done, We'll get a nice little skim coat of glaze, and uh, that'll be for little things like pinholes. You see, I got a few there. And, uh, you know, the, the minor little imperfections that might be left when we're done. 
but it's coming together, man. It's it's ta it's taking shape. Somebody said that there's no way you can fix this unless you're a sculptor, and just so happens I am a, a bit of a sculptor. So there we go. We're just about to get it dialed in. I mean, uh, we had just a few little low spots here, nothing major, a really thin layer of skim coat, whatever you want to call it. And uh, by the time I buzz that down, that ought to be good to go. Uh, I promised you guys I would save a spot for y'all, so that's what this area is, like I mentioned. And uh, I'm gonna take you through it now. Obviously, we've already veed the crack out, and we've already wiped a little bit of filler in there. This filler is hard. We definitely don't wanna wipe another layer on it, and you can clearly see it needs one. So uh, you wanna go through and sand this stuff back down. Now, if the, the mud was still uh, sticky, hadn't firmed up all the way you could go ahead and go over with another coat the two coats will bond together but once it's dry i recommend going back through and getting in all these little craters kind of smooth them up a little bit make them to where they're not it's not so cratery that stuff could cause cracks because you could end up when you wipe your next layer end up with little crevices little voids if you will that, that are just air you know they're not going to have it won't be solid you don't want that that's where cracks can form and we need all the help we could get with this stuff so uh, anyway i'm going to go through obviously we're going to work we're going to fill this area in and then this area also and uh i'll get this all roughed up and we'll go mix this up to filler and get started Alrighty, here we go. Let's just get that on in there. No, nothing scientific about this. Uh, you do want to make sure that you press this down in there, work it down into the onto that foam. You know, you don't want there to be any kind of air pockets or any of that. So, kind of squishing it down in there. You know what I mean? We're gonna go right over this body line. We ain't worried about it right now. We will carve that out after this is all set up. And remember, we have already sanded all of this. Everything has been sanded with 80 grit. We're good to go there. This mud is already starting to tighten up on me. Let's hurry up and get it on there. Don't worry about making it look pretty. Just get it on there. We'll make it look pretty with the sandpaper. Uh, the main thing is just getting it on there and making sure that it that it doesn't have those air pockets. You don't want that, that wouldn't be good. So, press it down in there. You know, like we always say, man, work it one way, then the other. Might get a little messy on you, that's fine. Uh, sometimes, this stuff will do that to you, that's okay. You'll get better as you go. I know I've seen guys that can't wipe this on there to save their lives <laughs> without making a gigantic mess and that's okay it, it, it takes time you know it's nothing to be embarrassed about the more you do it the more you'll get it and you can see here this ain't exactly the prettiest but the smoother you get it on there the better because uh it's less sanding you got to do you know so anyway that's about as good as we're going to get it, it looks like but i think it'll do well, this sucks. Electric just went out. Yeah, this has been an issue lately. The lights keep flickering and the, the breaker just keeps tripping and it's any time I turn the heater on. The last time I had this issue, it was the main breaker out here on the pole. And man, that thing was pricey. Just lost my screw, that's all right, I'll find it. That thing was pricey last summer. It was $200, I ain't no telling much it'll be this summer. And it's because it was just loaded with ants. Let's see what we got going on here. I mean, you can see there it's on. It keeps tripping. Okay. Let's see what that does, see if that helps us. So it did come back on, but unfortunately, I guess we're just not gonna be able to run the heater. And that sucks because it is a little chilly out today. and windy i can't seem to get the doors to stay shut yeah that cold north wind is coming right through this door right behind me so i have to break out the old heat gun this is the way i've been doing it 
This is why it's taking so long. Anybody wondering why? What's up with the, the next video? What's taking so long? You said you were going to immediately put out a video, a part two on this dash. And here we are, what, a week later? I apologize, man. We're going to have to get this figured out. I don't know what it is yet. I'm going to start off with my palm sander here. Just run over this. I'm um, using 40 grit on the first pass. That's going to get us really, really close, really fast. Check out the roof on this thing, y'all. <laughs> Should we jump up there and make some snow angels or what? Yeah, that's crazy, man. It looks like it's snowing in here, that's for sure. Uh, you know what? This thing is like truck bed tough now. Maybe we could jump up there and make some snow angels. I don't know. So I just finished up my uh, first pass over that area. Yeah, just like we thought, you know, we got some low spots. I figured we wouldn't get it all on the first try. Not a big deal. Uh, I did go ahead and come over here and smooth all of this out. Uh, good news, tiny little low spot there. That's no problem. We'll fix that right quick. Uh, over here, another little low spot right inside the body line. I could probably get that with some glaze, I'm sure. And uh, check this out, man. This area where we remade all of this for that vent plate, man, that is looking nice. Look at that, that looks really, really good. Check it out. Got everything all feathered back really good. So it is definitely taking shape. We are getting there. Uh, I'm gonna wipe this one more time and I think that'll get it. Thought maybe I'd take a second to show you guys a little trick. Remember we had a low spot here, so I had to uh, re-wipe it. But this area all around, it's good. I don't want to uh, chew any of that up with my sandpaper. I only want to knock this down. So what you do is, is you just wait till the mud is, is almost dry. Look, I can still stick my fingernail in it. And you'll find the sweet spot. It just takes a little trial and error. Now the idea is to find the spot where you could just barely put your thumbnail in it, okay? But you can still sand it without it clogging up your paper. You see what I'm saying? Now what's going to happen is, if you're going to chew down that area where you applied that filler, but not the surrounding area. Look how fast that, see how fast it knocks down? Almost effortlessly, right? Barely even. I'm not putting any pressure on my board. I mean, it won't take but just a few little passes. And you'll be good to go, look at that. That's really nice. No more low spot. Well, there it is, all back one piece, all back in one shape. No more gouges and all of that. Look at that, this thing is ready to go. Uh, now you might be asking what the next step, man, look at the body lines, oh my goodness. Man, you might be asking like, what's the next step? And I know I've kind of told you guys that we would spray it with this, this kind of textury stuff here and then hit it up with the, the green, and I have changed my mind. I got to digging around online and found vinyl for this thing, and I bought 10 feet of it for about the same price as what that stuff costs. This stuff wasn't exactly cheap. It was almost like, this stuff was like six bucks a can, and uh, I ended up getting vinyl for it, and it's black. Unfortunately, we're, we're losing the green, but I don't care. Be perfectly honest with you, I think there's a little too much green going on in there. Anyway, it'd be kind of nice to break it up a little bit. And a black dash, I think, will be just fine. And besides, some of you guys pointed out that if we were to paint over this, chances are this stuff will probably crack out later. It is Bondo, after all. Uh, we reinforced it with the mesh, but it's Bondo, y'all. If we'd done fiberglass, maybe you know, like the kitty hair stuff, it would have been a lot stronger, but God, that stuff is so hard to sand. Trying to make all of these shapes, I just wouldn't even go in there, no way. I think we had our work cut out for us already trying to dial in all these little body lines, all of that stuff. I mean, we got body lines here, we got body lines up here that run the entire course of the dash. Uh, I wasn't trying to do all that in fiberglass. So uh, I think once we glue the vinyl over the top of this, 
it won't matter if this if we get a little crack in this you i don't think you'll see it under the vinyl i think it'll be fine and i think it'll kind of help hold everything together so anyway uh you might see little tiny little imperfections there uh not to worry i have a, something called nitro stand and it is just a really thin putty that you could wipe into things like pinholes you see there and uh, it dries almost instantly and you come back and you just knock it down and away we go uh, little stuff like that I don't think is gonna be an issue like I said we're gonna have a whole sheet of vinyl go over the top of this you ain't gonna see that this on the other hand I'm not gonna risk so yeah we will straighten that out I was thinking about shaving where this little emblem goes because the emblems all messed up anyway you'll see right here this little recessed area but how cool would it be to maybe make my own emblem and put it there and have it say like weird beard edition i don't know that'd be kind of funny right now i know some of you guys are probably screaming at the tv dude what about the speaker you know there was a speaker went in the middle of here yeah right here you guys remember it had all the little holes in it for a speaker to go in the center uh no we're not doing that that's out of here we're gonna go with it nice and smooth and i know some of you guys well, what about the the defroster vents there's no defroster vents I know, we, we got our work cut out for us. And I'm not gonna lie, that the defroster vents, are, I'm, I'm a little worried about, because we gotta go cutting on this now. And man, after all this work, getting it all dialed in and nice and smooth, now we're gonna go cut big giant holes on it? That's kind of stupid, right? I don't know any other way. And uh, so, but it's such an involved process. We're gonna do it on the next video. So that's what we'll do on the next one. I'm sorry, I told you guys we weren't gonna do endless build videos on this car, but then, you guys started sending stuff and lo and behold, I've got a whole brand new carpet kit to put in this thing. That carpet kit wasn't going in there with this beat up dash, I'll tell you that much. So uh, I went ahead and decided just to go for it and get and, 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 and do all of this work. And I really, I signed myself up for quite a project, not gonna lie. But here it is, man, an entire weekend of, of working on this. Uh, now granted, we had some issues with weather and uh, electricity. Yeah, lovely, but uh, Anyway, we still managed to get this far in one weekend, and I think just maybe just a few more hours cutting out defroster vents and gluing on some vinyl, and we will have this thing good to go. But unfortunately, we are gonna have to do that on the next video. This video is getting way too long. I apologize. Uh, you know, some of y'all would like me just to get to it. I understand, but a lot of y'all like to see the process and uh, without a bunch of time lapses, and uh, me just kind of skipping through it. I, I wanted to really show you guys what's all involved in this. And again, if you're not gonna cover it, don't go with Bondo, go with like fiberglass or something like that. But be ready, you're gonna be sanding a lot longer than a weekend, I would think. Because that stuff is no joke. Ask me how I know, I already went through it on that gigantic roof. It takes forever to sand that stuff. It's really, really strong, but good. So anyway, GoPro battery is about gone. I got to get out of here. You guys, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, that really does help the channel grow. Uh, just a simple thumbs up, even a thumbs down, believe it or not, actually helps the channel grow. And uh, leaving a little comment, man, just something, just something to say hi. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that gets the videos recommended. And that is the kind of stuff that makes the channel grow a lot quicker and uh, Good news, the, the YouTube is really recommending these videos, so I'm gonna stay after it, y'all. Oh, and hey, don't forget my Instagram and Facebook. You guys can get notifications because anytime I put a video out, I, I post that I put a video out so you guys can find out, just in case you don't get a notification from YouTube. So anyway, we'll get everything all straightened out. I'm gonna try to figure out what's up with this danged electricity, and uh, we're still, we're gonna wait on the shipping. We're waiting on that vinyl to get here. It ought to be here in a couple days. So I'm gonna get out of here, you guys. I'll see y'all next time.